virus is not going anywhere. We're still having increased cases of infection. We're going to have long COVID around for a long time. So this is just going to have to be part of the conditions that we treat. So long COVID is the persistence of symptoms that can be a wide range of things that um, continue for at least eight weeks after the acute period of COVID. So the acute period is 28 days. So essentially what that means is if you've got symptoms that extend beyond 12 weeks and they're not explained by another condition and they were, they're there now and they weren't there prior to COVID, or at least they're worse now, uh, that's defined as long COVID by the World Health Organization definition. Unfortunately, it's increasing because we, we look at a term called prevalence of a condition. So prevalence means that at any one time, how many people suffer from this condition? And because uh, long COVID is a chronic condition, it seems, it's, it's there for at least three months, as I said. And for many people, it persists for many months, and in some cases, years. You'll find some variability in the numbers of how many people go on to long COVID. Conservatively, it's probably 5%. In some populations, higher than that. In Australia, there's been 9 million Australians that have had COVID. Most of those people have had COVID this year, in 2022. So if we said 5% of 9 million, then you can do the maths on that, and you'll see that's a lot. I'm not sure that if there's a typical long COVID patient because what's very clear is that the symptoms of long COVID are really different. Um, and the patients are also really different, but the people that we're seeing in our clinic here at St. Vincent's tend to be younger people, sort of 20 to 50. And the female to male ratio is in, in, in preference for more females. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing in the literature as well in the studies. the earlier versions of the virus were more likely to cause long COVID than the later versions. Even when we sort of adjust for vaccination, because we know that the alpha and beta versions of the virus, when they were around 2020, we didn't have any vaccines. So everyone that got them, you know, wasn't vaccinated. But with Delta, we see that people that, get del that got Delta um, were more likely to develop long COVID than people that have had Omicron. So it seems that Omicron is not only less virulent to cause severe disease and end up in hospital acutely, but it also seems that it's less able to cause long COVID. So that's some good news, um, but the bad news is that it's more infectious. So because it's more infectious, it's able to infect more people and more people means those numbers go up. By definition, they experience it for at least three months because it, they have to have had symptoms for three months. In the data that we collected for the ADAPT study in an unvaccinated, largely unvaccinated population in 2020, we saw that there was about 40% of people that had long COVID symptoms at four months and that reduced to 30% by eight months. So 10% spontaneously got better in those four months, but four months is a long time anyway. And that's what we're seeing in clinical practice. So the patients that I've cared for um, more than two years after their COVID, um, in general terms, they're all better than they were two years ago. So things all get better generally, but it's glacial, like the pace is glacial. It all happens really slowly. Some symptoms um, seem to get better quicker than others. So for example, loss of taste and smell, which seems to happen less commonly with Omicron compared to Delta, Delta, but still can happen. These symptoms seem to go away quicker, so that's good news. But other symptoms, particularly fatigue, uh, which is more innocuous and difficult to measure, um, that can go on for longer. So there's some very um, important similarities to chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID in the sense that it's a chronic condition, it's difficult to measure, and uh, if someone has an experience and you can't say that they don't have that experience, you've also got to look at, it's a diagnosis somewhat of exclusion, which means that there's some tests that we need to do to exclude depression, to exclude thyroid dysfunction, poorly controlled diabetes, terrible sleep apnea, all of these conditions that can give you fatigue. So until you do those tests, you can't just say, oh, it's chronic fatigue. 
or it's long COVID. So, so that's very similar. But uh, what I would point out is that there are important differences. In terms of like influenza or rhinovirus, these are the common respiratory viruses. They do not in large part cause these chronic symptoms in so many people or in any person. The example that I give is a patient that was really sick with influenza um, in hospital with pneumonia. I would typically tell that person, look, you're gonna take probably a month to get over this. You know, allow yourself a month. But I'm not telling them, you're gonna take three months to get over that, right? So that's for a pneumonia that someone ends up in hospital with. So the idea that a respiratory virus takes three months to get over, this is completely different. This is not business as usual. And the research shows that as well. So, you know, other coronaviruses, we've tested them and looked at the immune response months and even a year down the track, and it's not switched on. Whereas the one with COVID, the people with COVID have their immune system switched on and dysfunctional a year later. Like we can measure that in the laboratory. We can get blood samples. We can look at those cytokines that are abnormal. And the next thing that we need to do is work out how we can change that dysfunctional immune system.